All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Stepping Stones to AAC, a season to celebrate. We're super excited to end the year with one more Stepping Stone session. I'm Heather Prenevo, and I'm here with Brittany Tony, and we'll just take a minute here to go over some housekeeping as people are logging in. And why don't we jump right in and I'll start off with the introductions. I am Heather Prenovo. I'm a ASHA certified speech language pathologist and AAC consultant for Minnesota and Wisconsin supporting uh, the Saltillo products. I am the Bitmoji on the right and really excited to share some more fun ideas with you tonight. And I am joined by the fabulous Brittany Tony. <laughs> hey everyone, um, good evening. As Heather mentioned, my name is Brittany Tony. I am also a speech language pathologist and I support Saltillo products in Ohio. And then starting in January, I will be supporting both KRC and Saltillo products in Southeast Indiana and parts of Kentucky. So we're so excited that you are here tonight. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you a little bit about our classroom. Um, so the icons that are shown on the shelves, if you have not been to one of our trainings before, these are all of the different topics that we have talked about or will talk about during our Stepping Stones to AAC classes. Um, as you will see, the guy with the little guy with the party hat is the last one. So um, this is the last one of the year. But if you have not seen our other trainings, we encourage you to go to, I can link the link again if you missed it, but our Bitly classroom, we have a link and if you click on the icons, it'll take you to the previously recorded webinar. Um, we will plan to do some in the new year, um, but probably not until February. So just stay tuned for that. Um, there are some other items that you can click on within the classroom, such as the large low tech board that I'm po pointing to and the go symbol that Heather is pointing to. You can also click on one of us if you'd like to learn more about how to get support or training from your local PRC Saltillo consultant. So again, we welcome you to Stepping Stones. Uh, we like to just chat with you guys a little bit about, we know AAC is a journey. Um, and so this is just one step in that journey, learning a little bit more about how can we motivate and encourage um, our learners to use AAC um, at home, at school, and in the community. Okay, so here is our first um, resource that we have today. And today we're going to be talking about core words and strategies to model during the holiday season. So it's a season to celebrate no matter what you're celebrating. So we, we're gonna highlight that this evening. But this first form is our Stepping Stones to AAC organize, I forget what we call it, organization tool. <laughs> month I do this and I forget planning tool, organization tool, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so you can download this through the materials tab and it's going to be the same if you've attended other stepping stones trainings. But what's great about it is that you can take this with you. We're going to work through it together this evening. So you know how to walk through this, choose core words, plan questions and comments and work on how to model using your student's AAC device. Um, you can use any device, doesn't have to be a PRC Saltillo device. Um, and then what's also nice about this is after we walk through it, you can take this and use it for other sessions that you have planned, or you can give it to families or colleagues that may have missed our session. So it's just a really nice tool to keep in your AAC toolbox. And then this next form or material that we have is also available for download in the materials tab, but this is our Stepping Stones to AAC reference tool or reference form. So this is for you to use to reference as it's so named um, after the training. So if you forget what we talked about or forget how we walked through each of these parts, um, each of these steps, you can remember and refer back to this for 
um, some tips and tricks. And also, it's also good, again, to hand out for families if you're an SLP or a teacher supporting a student who uses AAC, or it's great for, again, colleagues or somebody who may have missed the training but maybe wanted to attend. So do with it what you will, but it's a, just a good reference tool. All right, so with those two handouts, now we're going to talk about why did we start with um, looking at celebrating during the holiday season. Um, and I apologize if there's some feedback. I'm not sure if that's on your end, Brittany, or my end. Um, no, I don't hear it, so you're good. With the holidays, um, we're celebrating, we're doing traditions, and so a lot of different activities can happen during the holiday season. So we find that that would be a really good time to start bringing out your AAC system and utilizing it in different ways. So there's cooking activities. You're going to maybe doing traveling. Um, you might be making crafts with them, playing games as a family, telling stories, um, and decorating. So just lots of different ways that we can um, start using AAC um, outside of just the classroom or outside of just requesting things. And that is why we were super excited to um, target this this evening. One way that we could get started with those kinds of things is having photos. Um, and we've done a session before on looking at like a photo album, either a digital photo album or an actual physical one. Um, but grab photos uh, from previous celebrations, um, look through them, or start creating a new photo album. So start taking pictures during these celebrations so that we can either be planning for an upcoming event, maybe you need to prep your student or your child for the, those upcoming celebrations just because it's a big change in their routine. Um, or we can use them to retell about the event afterwards so we can tell somebody what we did at grandma's house or what we um, did at auntie's house. Or we could even do both so that we get that repetition because we know uh, that to learn these skills, we really do need that repetition. They need to be practicing those words, those phrases over and over and over again. Same for us as the communication partners. So for us modeling beforehand to plan and prep as well as to retell after we're done. So this last um, material or handout that we have for you this evening is our 96 location word power low tech board. Um, this is based off of word power 60 basic, but it is 96 locations just so we can add some of those question words and some other descriptive words that maybe aren't on the home page of word power 60 basic. And we link this for you for a couple reasons. So you can download and use it in future sessions and as well as you can follow along during this training and listen to the words that Heather is using as she's talking. So you can think about maybe what core words you could choose with the specific activity that we're going to be doing tonight. So as Heather talks, just listen to maybe what words she's using and we're gonna ask you to recall those later. Exactly, and as Brittany said, I always think about um, when you're trying to think, trying to decide what you're gonna model, check that homepage, check this low tech board, find those words because then you don't have to think about where you're going and how to find the word because it's um, on this, screen for you. So let's start looking at a photo album and we're going to look through these together. I'm going to kind of model words or phrases I might say or how I might talk about a photo album. And if you could be jotting down either in the chat window or kind of mentally, what are some of the words, those core words that you're hearing me use um, as I talk about photos in our photo album? Let's get ready to celebrate Hanukkah. We should get our dreidel out. What should I do with it? Oh, I can spin it. You can spin it. Next, let's get the candles to put on the menorah. I can light it. If we're getting ready for Christmas, we need to get all of our decorations out. 
you can put the star on top. I can put the lights on the tree. Let's make some new decorations for next year. When it's time to make cookies, we need to get the frosting so that we can decorate. You get the white frosting, I will get the red frosting. When we're getting ready to celebrate Kwanzaa, we can get the candles for the Kanara. I will put the first candle in. I'm ready to make some food for our celebration. Let's make more with the fruit. And I practiced with this, Brittany, and those boxes lined up every time except <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> oh my goodness. So our boxes have been wonky the past couple times. Oh well, they are still syllable. <laughs> they are, they just don't line up. So we apologize for that. So based on what you heard me talking about, oh, thank you, Sharon, you are right on there. So she said, yes, it. do it, you, I, on, make, put, more, woohoo. Ruby, celebrate, get, spin, I, you, frosting, candle, yes, more. You guys are on it. And there's no right or wrong answer with this. I'm just jotting down the ones that I thought of too um, and that you guys picked up on as well. Um, but the whole idea behind this is, okay, we picked these activities. Nikki, thank you, need, first, next, yes. Those would be good ones to target too. Um, so you take that activity and then think about, or even practice, what would I say? And what are those core words that naturally lend themselves during that and for some and for me this was the hard part is just kind of reshaping how we talk about things to um, use those core words and once you start doing it it starts to become more automatic so planning it out now um, and doing that work ahead of time can help you out all right so once you've picked out some words um, some core words to target the next step is then thinking about open-ended questions um, and we know open-ended questions, um, they really do encourage communication. They um, encourage the AAC learner and um, the other communication partners to you know, communicate what they wanna communicate for. Um, having those open-ended questions written down helps you think about what we are gonna target, um, helps encourage that AAC learner to use those words. And the biggest thing with open-ended questions is they um, require more than just a yes and no answer. And so um, if we are doing a lot of yes, no questions, which happens a lot and we get into, you know, a kind of a, a rhythm and Brittany can to attest to this with me that sometimes you just kind of fall back into it because those, those are the questions we're used to asking. Um, but if we start yes. asking open-ended, it opens the doors for more ideas and more responses. So we have a quiz. Pop quiz, which one of these is an open-ended question? Did you go to grandma's house or what shape cookie should we make? Ah, look at that. Everyone yeah. is correct. You guys all passed. A plus. A plus for our learners. Um, so yeah, think about if all we asked is, you know, did you guys go to grandma's house? Your response is yes. Now you're kind of forced into more yes, no questions, right? And you start playing 20 questions versus what shape cookie should we make? We don't have to know ahead of time what they want to make. Yes, we might have choices available, but you know what? They could say, you know, race car. That's totally fine. We could make a race car cookie, but I don't have it with me today. Um, so it provides the opportunity for them to be able to tell us what they want to um, say versus us predicting what they should um, should say. All right, so our out of sequence 
little planning tool here. Um, so what are some questions that either have I or you in it, or the response would include I or you in it? And maybe you can think about some of the questions that I modeled earlier. Who should light the candle? Yeah. Where do we put the star? I was thinking about that question. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, so that you could say something like, I put here or something. Yeah. Or who will get um, and I apologize I spelled it wrong. When do you want to light it? Yes. Perfect. You guys totally get it. Oops. All right, so how about for put and get? What kind of questions could we ask for put and get, or get? We can reuse. Where do you put the star? And maybe who will get the fruit? I think I said earlier. Who gets the big present? Oh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we say, what do we need? Get whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. And then the last one is make. So What's a question we could use? And I was trying to look through. Maybe we can, who will make a cookie? What shape? Perfect. Yeah, I like that. Lisa, that's good. And sorry, I got distracted for a second. We're getting a thunderstorm through here in December in Minnesota. It distracted me. <laughs> <laughs> Not normal. Perfect. So you guys get the idea with that. Is that, you know, either the response, we're getting a, ah, I don't need to have the basement. I am in the basement, uh, but so far so good. Um, Fortunately, I'm north of where the storms are rolling in, so I'm just hearing the thunder, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will let you know if I have to ditch out early, but so far, so good here. All right, which leads us to then, um, our next step is coming up with possible comments. So if your child is not yet responding to those open-ended questions, which is totally okay, we can model the response. Um, we can also just model commenting because that's a great skill to have. We want to move beyond just those requesting things, right? So if we wanted to comment about uh, the things in our environment, that is um, a next step. Writing down one or two comments that um, you could model for your child in what they could say to those responses, again, just kind of provides you that um, information ahead of time so that you're not having to think of it on the fly. And then we really encourage that you keep those um, models at or above their language level. And so what we mean by that is if your AAC learner is you know, just pressing or using one to two words on their device at a time, so maybe they're just saying go or maybe they're saying go more, then we would be modeling at that, so that two um, word level or just above, so maybe two to three words beyond that. So don't go into full-blown sentences yet. Um, we're going to work up to that. We're going to slowly expand their utterance. Yeah, thinking about it just like language development for you SLPs, you know, you wouldn't 
talk to, or I mean, you not SLPs, you wouldn't talk to a a one year old in full blown sentences probably, or a baby in full blown sentences. So kind of thinking it of it like that, you maybe they say something and you respond with a bigger um, utterance, but maybe it's not a full blown sentence. So I like to think of it like that too. Exactly. So the next thing would be is to jot down some of those comments that we would use I or you in. So it might be answering those questions or um, comments you could make with I or you when we're thinking about those pictures in our photo album. I, you, see, yeah, love it, Sharon. All right, so I see candle, or we could do I spin, ooh, I like it, or you spin. Yeah. Your turn, my turn, yeah. Yeah, great. I eat, <laughs> you guys are on it, perfect. All right, how about put and get? Oh, I like that too. You could have help me. Or maybe in, we could even expand that to help me, oh, help me get it. Help, help me put on. Oh yeah. There you go, Sharon. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Great minds think alike. <laughs> Right. Put on. Yeah. Get more. Love it. I like it. And then how about for make? Make me. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> we make more cookies or I make cookies. You help make. Ooh. Ooh, I like it. Make yummy cookies. Love it. Make yummy food. Mm -hmm. Let's make. Great. You guys have some super examples and I love it. So then the final step on our organizational tool and this planning process is to think about those, you know, two to three word models um, or moving beyond what um, we're currently at. So um, I went ahead and filled in that bottom section. So again, just kind of, so you're ready. If all of a sudden they, you know, put on their device, I get, how can I expand that? Um, I get more, you get more. Uh, I put in. And so you have those already. Um, as we mentioned, the more you do this, the more it becomes automatic. So planning this ahead of time can be super helpful. And then you want to find where those words are on your device or on a low tech board like the one we have in your handouts um, so that you're not searching in the moment to try to find it. So we went ahead and highlighted where each of these words are. Um, a great example, if you've laminated a low tech board like this, or even on a high tech board, um, you can go ahead and put a border around the button. Uh, low tech, you can use dry erase. High tech, as part of editing the button, you can add a border to the button to really draw your attention in. So in the activity, you're not focusing on the tool, you're focusing on the activity and the engagement um, and communicating about it, and then reaching for the device. I'm going to be modeling on WordPower 60 Basic on my touch chat device as we talk about the pictures. So just to run through and practice, and if you have your low tech board or your device um, with you, go ahead and model with us. So I could be talking about I. 
And we talked about I get the menorah. And maybe I'm going to make it go. Or you can make it spin. You make it go. I put the light on the candle. You put the star on. Or maybe we go into I make it. And if we go in under actions, here's a little tip. Let's is down here in the corner. So let's. Um, get the canara and light it. Or maybe if I go to actions, let's make more food. So you get the idea. We can talk in those full sentences. We can be modeling those couple words. And it's okay if I just model put or I just model get. But I'm talking about let's get it um, and slowly expand it. So as we wrap up the evening and our 2021 season of Stepping Stones, we'd like to just kind of reflect on your thoughts for how that went. Do you still have some questions about this planning process or uh, working with core words and different activities? How did it feel during the practice time when you're actually trying to find it on the device or try to find it on the low-tech board and you're trying to talk and touch at the same time? And do you have some next steps of where you're going to go with your AAC journey? Lauren, I really like the highlight on the board. Yes, it does really help. Um, if you're like me and you get like a little stressed when you're trying to find the word, I'm just drawing your attention in there. Yeah, exactly. Because finding it is always one of the hardest parts. <laughs> the other thing that I sometimes do with low tech boards, um, as, as Heather mentioned, you can do the dry erase marker if it's laminated, but you also um, can use a post-it note and cut out a square and then put it over those target words. Yes. So I've done that before. That was one of my favorite hacks um, that I just loved. Uh, Sharon, this is great to share with um, new to AAC as well that yeah, if you're not sure, it's okay to model that you don't know where those words are and talk through it. That's how your learners are going to learn too. Um, and just kind of, oh, okay, that's right. If we go here, that's where I'm going to find this word. Oh, I want to find where the word presents are. Maybe I go to groups and I talk about the holidays and we can talk about having a party, you know, and just kind of walk through and mm, I don't see it on there. Where else could it be? Great tip, Sharon. Yep. Exactly. There was a question on if this is going to be posted on our recorded webinars. Yes, it is. Um, just give us a few days to get it edited and up to we cut out, you know, all the extra talk at the beginning and <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> um, but then it will be linked in our recorded webinar section on the Saltillo.com website for you or through that interactive. Um, classroom. We really, really appreciate everyone's support and um, joining us for this series of trainings. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to your regional consultant or reach out to Brittany or I, and we'll leave that info up on the screen here. If you have any other mm -hmm. questions, we're happy to stick around. Otherwise, happy holidays. Well, thank you again for joining us this evening, and I hope you all have a wonderful holiday, no matter what you're celebrating. So we hope to see you in the new year. Merry Take Christmas. Care. Holidays. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.